Shalom, shalom, shalom. My name is Michael Sano, and welcome to the 12 Cities in Israel podcast. Um, this is one of the only positive podcasts on the state of Israel where we give you the people, the food, the culture, and basically everything Israel. And we give you all the good stuff. If you want the good stuff, you came to the right place. All right. Um, first off, I would. This episode is going to be a lot of fun. This episode's going to be. We're going to touch on some really fun subjects. One, we're going to talk about McDonald's, um, which everyone is probably going McDonald's. Um, but for those of you who've gone there, you you know what I'm talking about. Um, and for those of you who don't, um, cool. You're, you're about to learn some really fun stuff. Um, the other thing we're probably going to touch on because we're going to touch on McDonald's is humble girls. So um, humble girl is hamburger in Hebrew. But before I get into all of that, I have to give a wonderful huge shout out to Reuven. And the Revivo Project, and if you don't know who the Revivo Project is, you heard them at the beginning of this podcast, and if you stick through it all the way through this hour, you'll hear them at the end, and I take uh, the nice punch from their, uh, from whatever song I've chosen, and uh, I let it run through the credits, and if, if, if you're patient, and if you're, if you're a good boy, um, or girl, or whatever, um, and that's not condescending. It's just however you choose to identify yourself. Um, follow all the way along and listen to the Revivo Project. Uh, they are Israel, and it's some of the best Mizrahi music you will ever hear in your entire life. So for those of you who have been listening um, for a while, you know that right now, I have to give a shout out, uh, a couple shout outs to my sponsors. My first one is iConnect. iConnect, engagement with Israel that earns you rewards. Earn points and connect with Israel with articles, games, quizzes, polls, and more. So what exactly is iConnect? Well, iConnect is a social gaming platform where you can play, earn points, and receive cool prizes all for free. Um, now why should you play? Because iConnect introduces you to a unique way to acquaint yourself with all things Israel while working towards winning once in a lifetime experiences. So head on over to www.iconnect.co.il. That's www.iconnect.co.il and start playing now. And Shoshana and Theo and all the great people over there. Um, help support their work and go to that website, play those games and learn. Um, the next one is to our buddies over at Israel phones. Yeah. Israel phones. Israel phones is the leading provider of communication devices for people traveling to Israel. Israel phones offer SIM cards, MiFi devices, which are mobile Wi-Fi hotspots, travel products, and serves the connectivity needs of tour groups synagogues, schools, community missions, study programs, and individuals supplying top-of-the-line international prepaid SIM card cell phones and USB portable modem hotspots, um, which are all f uh, for rent or for sale. So right now, because of watching this show, Israel Phones will give you a free SIM card, which is a $15 value. Yay, Israel Phones. If you spend $30 or more on their site, all you have to do to get this deal is to use the coupon code 12 cities in Israel. That's all one word. The number one, two cities in Israel, no spaces when checking out on your next order for more information on what Israel phones can from, sorry, for more information on what Israel phones can do for you and to get this great deal, which it really is, um, Please head on over to uh, www.israelphones.com. That is www.israelphones.com. And it's actually funny. Um, 
So the MiFi hotspot, um, we rented it the last time we were there in April, and we wound up it wound up saving um, one. It wound up saving us a lot of money um, in the long run, and because just it, it, it we always had a spot. We were always connected, and it lasted the entire time we were there. And the ironic thing is, as soon as we got back to the U.S., uh, my wife had me get one for our phone plan here. Um, so definitely, definitely, if you're going over, that MiFi hotspot is a must-have. Um, definitely. Now, 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 welcome to episode 11 so yep my hebrew is not that rusty it's kind of rusty i was actually on the phone um some of the stuff that's coming up just to let you know i told uh, a bunch of you guys that we are going back to israel in january we're going to be staying at the c executive suites um for those of you watching the youtube version of this podcast i'm going to put that up it's c s e a dash hotel.com or dot co dot il but either way um we're going to be saying at the c executive suites and we're going to be doing interviews i'm going to be there for about nine days i have about 24 interviews that's my target my list is about i think it's 48 people and the reason the list is 48 people is because a couple of people you know people are gonna either they're going to do a couple of things. That's what I'm finding. One, they're going to say, absolutely, um, I'm in. Let's do it. Um, some people are going to say, wow, sounds interesting. Send me more info. And then you don't hear anything else from them. Um, some people are going to outright not be interested. And that's happened with two people already. And it stinks because it's two people that I really, really want you guys to get to know. They're wonderful people, and I can't, I'm not going to shame them, so I will not bring up who they are. Um, but if you guys are listening, if you guys are checking out the podcast, please know um, I've always got a seat at the table for you. Um, so please, 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 uh, if I reach out to you, I, I even did up, I knocked up a real nice, uh, um, what do you call it? invitation and photoshop and everything it's got ooh, it's classy classy and the c executive suites classy that place has got some style um actually i should uh i have pictures on the 12 cities in israel instagram account which everyone should be following um and i've got uh, i can put more of them up though i think i need to put more of them up because uh, i really need to be pushing that in the next couple of months um, but some of the people that we do have we do have some people who have responded um one of them is yaada who is you guys can find her on hebrew pod 101 she is a hebrew instructor um, she's not that by trade, but, um, uh, she went along this interesting circuit circuitous. I don't know if I use that word right. Um, oddly, <laughs> um, uh, she went on this, uh, interesting route to become, uh, the face of Hebrew learning on YouTube. Um, as far as I'm concerned. And when I was at Ulpan, a lot of people, knew who she was just when I brought her name up. Uh, what's awesome about her, super duper humble. You told her that, you, she she would, no, not at all. Um, she's awesome. Um, and so she's coming on. We've got a high school teacher who is a good, amazing friend of mine, Neely Kane. I've spoken about her before. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, something really interesting in Israeli society, and that's the test, and that's the big test they take. I think it's around 16 um, that they take in high school, and it's pretty much the uh, it, it's what sets them up for their uh, future next couple of years in the military. So um, it's kind of like drinking before the SATs. You don't want to do it. You want to take it seriously. Uh, so that, that one... Um, 
that one's going to be, I think that one's going to be absolutely uh, interesting. It's funny because normally you would say a high school teacher. Okay. Um, but we're going to talk about that. I have another, my friend Moti Biton, he's going to be on. Um, his sister, Raquel, she's coming on because she is a special needs educator. And Israel does some really great stuff for the special needs um, members of their society. And one of the things that they do that I, she won't be talking about this, but I want to talk about this. Um, and it's it's really cool. So it, it ties into the Neely Kane thing with taking the test um, for the military. So <clears throat> since... <clears throat> excuse me sorry again for those of you who know me i'm going to take a drink of coffee uh, mm. awesome peter that coffee's for you you know who i'm talking to um so what's interesting about this is since um since being in the military is such an integral part of Israeli society, there was this entire segment of the population that was not involved. And it led to feelings of exclusion, of course. Um, and what stunk about it even more is, and it, it wasn't done out of uh, um, any malicious intent or anything like this, but what stunk about it is it affected a segment of the population that is traditionally um, just due to their uh, uh, their biology ruled by their emotions, and that is the special needs um, the special needs population uh, it, worldwide. So th it's hard to with, with for not for all of them but for some of them it's really difficult to deal with larger concepts so you try to explain these larger concepts sometimes they have the ability to grasp concepts and those concepts can't be greater than that of a two-year-old or a five-year-old or a six-year-old or whatever and so all they knew is that they were couldn't do what everyone else was doing, what their brothers were doing, what their sisters were doing, what their mom and dad had done. So what the IDF did, and this is so freaking awesome, they set up special needs units. They're special needs units. So if you have a child who has special needs, and they'll have to be assessed, of course, but they can serve in the IDF in a support role in an administrative role. Some of them are work in kitchens. Some of them work in offices, but they, they're a part of it. And that inclusionary factor is so tremendous and moves me to a point. I'm, I, I always talk about getting misty right now. I'm getting misty because I just think that to open the doors and it's, it's that concept. I was saying, there's always a seat at the table for you. That is such a tremendously important Israeli and Jewish concept that it's it's profound. Um, I wish more people across the world would practice it. There's always a seat at the table for you. So, all right. So what I wanted to talk about was something interesting that had to do with a couple of my Instagram posts. And I was, uh, <laughs> this is kind of funny. So... I have a couple of inter uh, 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 I have a couple of Instagram posts that always get tons of likes that always take me about so normally I'll trend at a, a x number and then I'll put this post up and it'll boom boost up sometimes double what I normally get sometimes even more <clears throat> one of them is puppies the other one is cats the other one is food, 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 food. So yeah, everyone loves cats. Everyone loves dogs and they always get huge hits on Instagram, um, on YouTube, all over the place. Facebook, you put up cats and dogs and people, go, yo. so when I have two cats, so 
I totally feel you. I take pictures of cats when I'm in Israel because they're everywhere and they're awesome. Beersheba is the city of cats. Beersheba, the city of cats. Ah, that should be no. Um, I'm digressing. Sorry about that. <laughs> but one of the ones that I put up that always gets a lot of uh, feedback, a lot of engagement, is food. And interestingly, one of the ones that I put up every once in a while is McDonald's because I love McDonald's. Um, I do. I, I don't eat it very much, um, if at all. Uh, I'll probably have it maybe once a month. Uh, but when I'm in Israel, I always, always, always find myself slipping into mcdonald's so the mcdonald's experience um in israel is unlike anything i have ever seen in the united states so and i've been all over the northeast i've been all over the place when i was in the military i've been to mcdonald's in a couple of other countries i've been to mcdonald's in where germany I've been to McDonald's in Sweden. I've been to McDonald's uh, in a but just all over the place. Um, and all of them are different too, but nothing on the planet compares to Israel, uh, McDonald's in Israel. Um, and so I even went so far as to look up uh, some information on it. So I have notes research notes on McDonald's in Israel. So pretty prepared. I take my food seriously. So, um, th this is the interesting thing. So I'm going to have a sip. Hold on just one sec. You guys get to hear the, uh, the night that was a slurp on, uh, uh, on the, um, on the microphone. So I'm sorry about that one. That was actually my grandmother's probably like where yeah uh so all right um so as you know mcdonald's is a chain restaurant that is also that's run by franchises so you buy into a franchise and boom you own it now in israel all over the place uh, you know people will own a couple of different mcdonald's in israel there's only one and it is this guy only padan he was the founder of McDonald's Israel, and they have, are you ready for this? 280 McDonald's in Israel. And before you go all, uh, so gross, I can't believe you would eat that stuff, it's garbage. Um, you're absolutely wrong, because... I've had it before, so I know in my head what to expect. But my wife, who is from Philadelphia, and, w you know, we, we lived in New York City for a number of years, and we lived just outside the city. So we've, we've had our American experience. When she went to McDonald's, she said, oh, my gosh, this is probably one of the best, freshest hamburgers I have ever had. No lie. That's my wife, and my wife loves burgers. She hates hot dogs. I don't know what's wrong with her, but she loves burgers. So she went bananas for this thing, and what it is is, um, so let me just define the experience for you. So you go to McDonald's, and you walk inside, and it looks like a normal McDonald's. Um, but then you have to, there, there's no one standing in line. So you're like, I don't. I don't get this. What do I do? Um, and then they point you over to these huge, enormous screens. Enormous screens. They're about the size of, like, I don't know, a 52-inch television screen. This is the one, uh, if you're watching, the one on that I'm sitting next to is a 32-inch. And actually no they're probably about that size maybe a little bit bigger but they're long and they're tall and what you do it's touch screen and you go down and you go through the menu and you pick what you want you can have chicken you can have chicken nuggets you can have a chicken sandwich you can have burgers all different kinds of burgers 
um, and you pick them out from uh, the, uh, the 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 touchscreen, and you pick out uh, what do you want? Do you want mayo? I want extra mayo. Do you want lettuce? Do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want a fried egg on it? Absolutely. Um, actually, I don't know if they did that, um, but I'll get to that in a minute because I do think that I'm going to wind up talking about burgers. Um, so basically what you do is you touch screen all this stuff and then you get it, you swipe your card or insert your card and then boom, you're done. You just, I mean, you've saved so much time. You've gotten exactly what you want. There's no, and a lot of people would say, yeah, but the customer inner experience and the social internet, whatever, man, you're going to be speaking to this person, but bottom line, you're there to get a burger. Now, what I wasn't prepared for the first time is that at McDonald's, everyone's had a McDonald's burger. They're about a specific size. They're, they're so like, what is it? If you go get a bun at the grocery store, they're, what is it? A couple of inch, inches in diameter in Israel. They're freaking enormous. They're huge. They are probably, I don't know, five inches across. They're enormous. And so, and, and then you're like, this thing's enormous. How am I going to eat this whole thing? Um, and then you sit down and you eat it in the fries. Check this out. The fries taste exactly like the fries in the United States. So that's one of the big things with McDonald's is consistency. I watched this whole thing on, uh, what is it? I think it was on Netflix. It was on Ray Kroc. And who, by the way, was kind of an a-hole. Not a very nice guy. Um, but he uh, he had a good, hit him and the, uh, the McDonald's, I guess they were the McDonald's brothers, right? But anyways, uh, so it's you get this enormous, enormous burger. Now, here is the thing. There are 180, they're called standard McDonald's in Israel. There, Now, I said there were 280. Well, what's the other 100? Well, the other 100 are kosher. So, for those of you who aren't prepared for it, and those of you who are thinking, well, I want a cheeseburger. Okay, if you, like... In Beersheba, when I go there, there are, as far as I know, there are two McDonald's that I know of. There's one at the bus station, and there is one at the mall. The one at the bus station is not kosher, as far as I know. But if I'm wrong, hit me up in the comments, reach out to me, and let me know. The one in the mall is kosher. Uh, how do I know that? Because I just looked at the picture that I posted on Instagram this past week, uh, of it. And what, for those of you who don't know what kosher is, kosher is a set of guidelines that are set out, um, for how Jews can eat. Uh, one of the big ones is not mixing milk and meat, um, in meal and also, uh, over time. So what that means is basically if I eat milk, I, I have to wait about six hours and there are certain things that you can have with milk. There are certain things you can't have with milk. Um, and there are a number of animals that are restricted. So what that means is basically chazir, which a uh, pig is not kosher. So uh, most people know that uh, but pig is not kosher, so you're not going to find the McRib <laughs> uh, in a, a kosher McDonald's. So um, it's it's interesting for some of you who are like, why why are you telling me this? Well, you know, there are some people who don't know, and hey, we're here to we're here to help everyone. Everyone's got a seat at the table. Ooh, throwing that one around. Um, so. One of the things that was interesting about the burger, one of the, the one of the things that was uh, um, because this was one of the comments that my wife had. Wow, this is the freshest, beefiest burger I have ever had at McDonald's. I mean, it literally because you remember how I told you how the fries are just like the fries in the United States. You know what I mean? Um, 
they all the, the, the consistency but the burger is i want to say i say beefier and i want to use the word richer but i don't know how to apply that word but it feels right so i'm just gonna say the burger is richer um but yeah so it, it, bottom line it tastes better it tastes fresher it tastes more just meaty there's just it's really it doesn't not that mcdonald's burgers taste bad but they're usually just this little tiny thin patty that mm, hey mcdonald's in israel their burgers are not thin their burgers are, not only are they big around but they're they're thicker and so you're really getting like a restaurant style burger and it's i think it's called the uh, the one i had was called the americano Amer yeah and if you get anything americano in israel that basically means it's going to be honking it's going to be huge um so i made that mistake when I bought a burger at another place, which hold on just one sec, because I have it here. The, um, 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 hold on. I'm looking. Give me one sec. Give me one sec. There is another burger. Um, there is another burger place. Burger ranch. So Burger Ranch is the second uh, largest um, fast food burger chain in Israel. And uh, their Americano is, I think it's even bigger. Um, it's ridiculous. But um, bottom line, McDonald's burgers in Israel are huge. They taste a lot better. Now, why do they taste a lot better? Well, it's interesting why that is because it has to do with those 100 stores. So the 100 stores that are kosher McDonald's, that the 100 kosher McDonald's in Israel, um, they all have to have their, their meat prepared a specific way. It's all got to be made halakhically uh, or... This is going to sound gross. Sorry, guys. It's uh, Meat has to be ritually slaughtered a specific way in order for it to be kosher. So in order for the hamburgers to be served in a McDonald's and for it to have its kosher stamp um, and keep that sign kosher in the front, it's got to be the beef has to be prepared a specific way. Um, also, uh, the buns have to be prepared a specific way and on top of this they have and i read this and i was kind of like what that's so crazy they have pesach buns pesach uh passover for those of you who who don't know what i'm talking about passover um they have sp we have to we have an entirely different um rule set on what we can eat um for passover for the if you're observant um and they have Passover buns at kosher McDonald's. How? How do they do that? That's awesome. That's amazing. Can do attitude. That guy's got moxie, whoever came up with that. Um, so, yeah, uh, they're, they're, so they use their own Israeli cows. They use ingredients from Israel. Um, and if you've ever been to Israel and you've eaten in Israel, you'll notice the freshness of the food. Um, the standards are, in my opinion, the standards are much higher. Um, and that re re those standards are reflected in, I can't believe I'm, uh, those standards are, those standards are reflected in your McDonald's meal in Israel. Um, it, this is not a plug for McDonald's, but definitely I've eaten McDonald's in a ton of different places. And I would highly recommend that if you are going to step out, uh, um, try it. All right. Um, we are halfway through this episode. Uh, this is, this is actually a lot of fun. I didn't, I was, I was kind of struggling with how I was, how am I going to fill up time talking about McDonald's? Um, give me one moment. I'm going to take a sip. Oh. There you go. And then I'm going to tell you about 
two more of our wonderful sponsors. And our next one is one of my favorites. Are you guys ready? Everyone loves Neviot. Neviot flavored water. Nature at its best taste. Neviot delivers you with a true combination of health and pleasure. Based on Neviot natural mineral water, one of its kind in Israel. It's enhanced with five, five B group vitamins. It's naturally sweetened. It is low in calories, only 35 to 40 calories per eight fluid ounces. There are no preservatives, no color additives, and it's available in delicious, indulging flavors like apple peach and the grape, which I have right here. Um, if you're in Israel, you should be drinking Neviot. For more information, check out their website at www.neviotglobal.com forward slash en forward slash home. That is www dot n e v i o t global dot com forward slash e n forward slash home now a funny story about this water um it's i took it and i i so i was i think i was getting the garbage cans and um to put them out or bring them in i can't remember but there was a sheriff there and i ran across the road and i said hey and he said, yeah, can I help you? I said, um, do you want something cool? <laughs> and he looked, gave me the weirdest look. Um, and he said, uh, what is it? I said, I have bottled water from Israel, and it's amazing. Do you want to try it? Turns out this guy is the school safety officer, uh, the sheriff that is down at my son's school, and he knows my son. So I'm talking to a sheriff that winds up knowing my son. Um, but he tried it and he was like, wow, the apple literally tastes like there's apples in there. So you got to try it. And if you want to try it in the US, if you can't wait to get to Israel, or if you've been to Israel and you can't wait to try it, I have a place where you can get it. You can get it at Makolet Online, our other sponsor. Makolet Online's main goal is to make Israeli groceries and Judaic products affordable and available to everyone in the USA and Canada. Their online store carries items that are unavailable in most places in North America. Things like tahini, Israeli chocolates, frozen borekas, and the Neviat water that we are drinking here today. At Makolet Online, you will find your favorite Israeli goods or simply enjoy brand new flavors. All of their products are kosher and most are manufactured in Israel. If you want the tastes of Israel delivered to your home, visit www.makoletonline.com. That's www.makoletonline.com and order today for an added bonus if you use the code 12 cities in Israel. The number 12, cities in Israel, all one word, no spaces. You will receive 15% off of your entire purchase. No lie. It's awesome. Um, so again, visit Online and order today. And definitely, definitely do that. I do that. Um, I order stuff. Plus, on top of that, they send me care packages. Um, Liam, what's up? Thank you again. Last week it was tahini bars, which were a dream. This week, Bamba. Okay, so for those of you who have been to Israel, you know that these peanut flavored snacks are everywhere. So kids grow up eating these. They're like uh, Cheerios. Well, no, they're not like Cheerios. Kids eat them like so little kids in the United States pop Cheerios into their mouth. In Israel, they pop these into their mouth. Um, they also, and somebody's got to reach out to me, or maybe, I'll, you know what, I'll stop being lazy. I will do the research. There is some correlation between eating these and uh, elimination of peanut allergy. And I've only heard conversations. I've never been involved in the conversation about it, but I've I've overheard it a couple of times. Um, these things are awesome. Um, they come to you from a company called Osem, which uh, makes everything. Um, they make a really great chicken soup too, broth, uh, by the way. Uh, but Bamba, 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 
You can get it at McCullough Online. You can get Neviot at McCullough Online. I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to do both. Um, so back to burgers. All right. So I was telling you about, uh, what was I telling you about? I was telling you about McDonald's and I was telling you about everything being made in Israel. Um, all of the products being, uh, cause I was watching this thing about Iceland and Iceland has McDonald's, but they have to get everything shipped in. Because they they don't use any, I don't even know if there's Icelandic beef, um, but they use stuff from, and I think they get it from Europe. So if you're in a McDonald's in Germany, you might be eating beef from France or whatever. I don't, but I mean, that's, that's similar to if you're in the U.S. and you're eating at a McDonald's in L.A., you're probably getting beef from... Nevada, Wyoming, I don't know. Um, but if you're eating in a um if you're eating in a McDonald's in Israel, you're eating Israeli beef. Why is that such a big deal? I'll tell you why. Because Israeli beef is amazing. So I had never heard of it. There is this thing called entrecot which is a specific cut of beef. It's a specific steak cut. I don't know. There's like all kinds of magic about cutting beef. Um, but that sounds horrible. Anyways, um, but entrecot is is something that's normally served when you get like maybe a mixed grill or you'd, you'd be making stuff on the grill, barbecuing and stuff like that. Because my friend Moti, when I went over to his house and he had... His amazing barbecue. He had entrecot. Now, um, the first half I talked about McDonald's, it would only be fair to talk about the other burgers that I had. Um, and I want to get people to go to this one place, this one amazing place. And it's a chain. I didn't know it was a chain at the time, um, but it is called Agadir Burger. And wow, wow, wow. So they do something amazing. Their burger, also, you can get it in different sizes, but I always wound up getting like the big, huge honking one. Um, and it's amazing. And that, the Agadir burger that I went to was in Beersheba, and it was across the street from the dorms that I was staying in. So I, I, I think I wound up going there about three or four times in that one trip and it was phenomenally worth it. And they have these really fluffy fries. How do I describe that? So it's really weird. I don't know how they fry them, but they're cut in a specific way. And on top of that, they're crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. Don't know how they do it. It's magic. Don't care still going um so i go to the agadir in bersheva and i knew that they had different ones in different places but my i i i guess my agadir gravitational pull is always in place because it, it winds up every time I wind up staying somewhere or Agadir is just super smart in picking locations because I've gone to one in Tel Aviv and I've gone to the one in Jerusalem. The one in Jerusalem, by the way, is kosher for those of you, if it's a concern. Um, and wow, wow, wow. Now, this is where something interesting in my burger journey, <laughs> that's so ridiculous, in the burger journey that has been my life, um, it is where I was introduced because, and it's funny the way it, it, it happened, so I can't tell you exactly straight out. I have to give you a little bit of a story with it. So I'm there. I'm ordering my burger. They say, which size, which size would you like? I'd 
uh, how big is this? And the, the, the waitress gives me like with her hand, she shows me the size of it. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Sure. Now, what do I like on a burger? I like lettuce. I like, um, grilled mushrooms, grilled onions, and extra mayo. I don't eat cheeseburgers. That's just me. Okay. Um, I tend to eat koshers or not tend. I eat kosher. So, um, I don't eat cheeseburgers. Sorry guys. Uh, my wife loves them more power. Um, so then they go, would you like a fried egg on top of that? And I went, what? And my little pea brain, my little hamburger eating pea brain just started imagining that just started like I had already started experiencing the joy. <laughs> I can't believe this. I had already started experiencing the joy of a fried egg on top of my hamburger before it was it, it even hit the grill. I was like, you, what? you what? Oh my gosh. Yes. I would love that. Please give me that. And they did. And then came the next question. Do you want the, do you want the yolk runny or hard? Oh my Lord. My brain did like hunger somersaults. I have never, I, I still remember this. I, and you know, like when you're, you, this is so messed up. When you remember when your child was born, when you remember your marriage, I remember this burger with the same clarity. Is that pathetic or is that awesome? I tend to think it's awesome. Go burgers. Um, so I said, Ronnie, and you got to be kidding me. I touch, so I, and it's, it's funny. So the burger comes, it's enormous. It's the size of a Volkswagen. And, um, you go and you squeeze it gently. Otherwise it'll go all over you. And the yolk just runs down the outside you, I mean, they go out. Uh, all right. So anyone who says Ew, cheeseburgers rule and it sucks, you can't have it. Hold on. Oh. I'm really plowing through my coffee today. Um, you have no idea. So I'm just telling you about Agadir Burger. Okay. Because Agadir is amazing. There's another place which is gone on my S list right now. Um, it's Burger Market, which is in Jerusalem. I used to love them, um, but they did something that was really insulting to me and my wife the last time I was there. And um, we went up there. Well, I'll just tell you. So we went there. My wife and I went there, and I said, Medeberet uh, Anglid. And she shook her head no. And uh, she actually said no to me in English. Um, and then I said, then I said in English, does anyone here speak English? And she said, no, no. And I, I, I and we left. So, um, but they, they have, if, if you can get good service and you speak Hebrew, absolutely go there. Um, Burger Market has some of the best burgers. They do the same thing as Agadir. And what that is, is they mix. So burgers in Israel, the ones that I've had, um, are not just beef. So they take lamb, ground lamb, and ground beef and mix them together. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. It's so good. It's so good. Um, actually, that is where I get that. But, uh, in the beginning of this, I was saying I don't know if rich was the right uh, 
adjective and it absolutely is because lamb is very rich it's very full it's got a full nice meaty taste to it um and these burgers that's that's what it is it's it's the quality it's what they feed these animals it's just it's heaven it's awesome and these burgers at agadir at burger market where else have i had a burger i've had burgers all over the place um gosh i love burgers yum now i'm really hungry now i don't want to be here um that's not true i love being here with you guys i'm just i want to be able to step out of this podcast and go downstairs and step into agadir um man i miss you agadir and it's funny because i was talking to one of the people who's going to be on the podcast her name is luma um and she's awesome she's someone i uh, someone i've known another person that i've known since uh when i was at uh ben Gurion university um in bersheva and i said to her okay i'm gonna schedule you for later in the evening because as soon as we get done we're gonna go to agadir in tel aviv and she went yay so everyone i know loves tel aviv um it's or loves tel aviv everyone i know loves agadir so when you get to israel um of course try mcdonald's but definitely 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 you have to have to have to go to agadir um it's one of the best burgers on the planet go to burger market too very good stuff um my friend oh is it there's a burger place on the corner across from the green falafel in Bershev. I think it's Sheer. Sheer's Burgers or something like that. That place is amazing. Uh, my friend Bud, he loves um, BBB Burger. I, I don't know the exact name. I'm going to have to find out and I'll let you guys know um but the, the bottom line what i'm telling you is burgers are extremely popular in israel if you are a burger connoisseur absolutely go there they have burgers with um pastrami on them with corned beef on them like once i saw uh, a burger and it was piled high with with sliced meat on top of it um out of control out of control out of control um it's amazing they loved it that's the one thing that's that i find really interesting about israel is they like to take not only different flavors but different foods and just cram them all together and, and um spend the evening enjoying it um it's awesome yay yay food yay wow um all right so now that i have uh made everyone hungry including myself um uh, but i won't be going to um mcdonald's sorry trying to watch my figure um i'm going to wind it down because i think i have uh i haven't exhausted the burger subject but i think that's all i have to say about the burger right now um oh gosh i live for burgers and i am going back in january and i will have lots more burger stories and lots more burger pictures for you so um i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to put uh the agadir yeah i'll put the your i'll put the website address um up for agadir and i'll put the website address up for uh, McDonald's you you probably if if you don't speak Hebrew you won't know what it says but just you know treasure hunt okay go click whatever's clickable and you will see some really good food all right um I am gonna wind this thing down um and I'm gonna wind it down by telling you about two wonderful 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 organizations um that do a lot to help uh some uh some of the people in need in israel and the first one is Ale. 
Ale helps children with complex disabilities receive state-of-the-art medical, educational, and rehabilitative care in Ale's four facilities. In addition, Ale provides thousands of outpatient treatments annually. Without Ale, many of these children would be forced to spend their lives in hospitals with no opportunities for rehabilitation, education, and the love and warmth of a home. Please visit www.ale.org. That's www.aleh.org and see if there's a way that you can help. I, uh, I give to them and uh, I also put the I also follow them on Instagram. You should follow them too. They have some beautiful, wonderful, heartwarming pictures. They truly are um, little little holy. Just they're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, the next one I want to tell you about is Schneider Children's Medical Center of Israel. Um, it is the only comprehensive tertiary care hospital of its kind in the country and in the Middle East offering the full range of pediatric disciplines under one roof to all children from 0 to 18. Since its establishment in 1991, Schneider Children's has revolutionized the practice of pediatric medicine in the country and has been recognized as one of the leading pediatric institutions in the world. To see what you can do for them, please visit www.schneider.org. That's www.schneider.org. dot il forward slash eng. So that's www.schneider.org. dot il forward slash eng. Um, I give to them as well. They're wonderful, wonderful people um, who help anyone. They're in Petatikva which is, uh, what is that? That's between uh, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Um, Is it? My brain. Sorry, it's the end of the episode. (laughs) But they're in Petah Tikva, and uh, they do a lot. Them and Ale both do a lot to to help those who need help. And uh, they're awesome, so help them out. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that we are... Um, like I said, we're going back in January. Plus we also want to go back and we want to film six episodes of the travel show. That's the half hour show. Um, and we would like, uh, there's a little call to action. We'd like you to, uh, check out our website, www.12citiesinisrael.com and hit the PayPal button. Um, see if you can't give us two bucks. That's all we're asking for. Our budget is about $50,000. That covers transportation. It covers uh, lodging, food. Um, we have to pay for the restaurants that we showcase. Um, so it's not like so when 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 you see a travel show and they go and they they're eating somewhere, the travel show pays for their bill. They don't just get it, you know, comped for free just for being on the show. You have to you have to give these people something. So and we're more than happy to do that. Um, but we have a lot of places we'd like to go. We have a lot of places we'd like to show you. So um, if you want to help us out, uh, yeah, just check out our website, hit the PayPal button, and donate $2. Um, that's pretty much it. That's where I'm, I'm burning through this episode today. Um, all right. So thank you for joining us for the 12 Cities in Israel podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our feed. And become a part of the 12 Cities in Israel community. You can find this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify. And we'll be bringing you a brand new podcast every week. So keep your eyes out for that. Also, to help support this podcast, you can visit our Patreon page and become a regular donor. You can find that page at www.patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in Israel. And that's 12 cities with the number one, two, and then cities in Israel. Um, so also please visit our YouTube channel where you can see a video version of this podcast. If you're not already watching it, plus other videos that we have produced, including our fully travel episode on the city of Beersheba in Southern Israel. While you're there, um, share it subscribe uh we are really trying to get our subscriber numbers up 
We want to break 100. I think we're at 63. I'm actually paying for ads right now um, because I want people... I want people on the site. I want people on our channel. Um, so please help us, help us, help us get that subscriber count up and uh, definitely share. Okay. Um, check out our website, www.12citiesinisrael.com. You can check out our Facebook and our Instagram. I am updating all the time. Um, interesting story. We got blocked because I did not understand how hashtags work. Um, if you copy and paste continually, it is seen as spam. Uh, how, but we totally resolved it. We're back on the radar again. Um, what we did was we paid for ads, ironically paying for ads. We grease the wheels a little bit. You pay for ads and all of a sudden you become visible. So we are back out there. Um, and every day I'm posting a new picture from our travels in israel so check it out um all right basically that's it so uh